Hello and welcome to Shooting Outdoors channel, proudly supported by FMG Gun Shop, Dunchurch. In this little series we've been looking at 1.7 and 2.2, trying to work out which is the, the king calibre, and really just trying to generalise which calibre's good for, for what. So Tom's got a phone there, and what he's going to do is he's just going to ask me questions that we bullet pointed, and we're just going to take you through the last two videos and what we make of them. There is a train line not too far away, so if that gets involved in it we do apologize but we can't control everything we did do this a few days ago when it was nice and sunny the video cut out and now we're sitting it's brass we've had snow rain and some sun and some thunder a bit of everything really yeah and that all out in the last hour so we just want to get this wrapped up really really quick <laughs> Right then, firstly, I think we should explain the data matrix that we're using. Yeah, so the data matrix can be a bit confusing, a bit off point at first, but if you just pause it and study it, it makes a lot of sense. So you've got two chunks of data, a left hand wind and a right hand crosswind. And what that then does is it splits into two rows, 177 versus 22, for both left hand and right hand crosswind. And then it splits into three columns, 20, 40, and 60 yards. Within each of those ranges, you've got then three sub-columns, which tells you the difference between the center to center in both calibers. So that's group sizes, so consistency. Deviation, which is how far your point of aim to your point of impact was for both calibers, side by side. And then you have the final, which is how many mill dots we were using in order to hit that range. So you get a good idea of trajectory, consistency, and deviation. If you study it, it makes a lot more sense. And then you've got the second episode, which was the penetration knockdown. You've got the same again, it's just a simpler format. So if you can get the first one, you'll be able to get the second one. Which is a real clear way of, of just displaying data. So explain the um, plasticine we use. Why don't we use a jelly that's often used by uh, the Americans, etc.? Okay, so ballistic putty is used by Scotland Yard and by oh, well, is is it Gary well. Boosie, is it? in the uh, NCIS whatever it is, and you, it, yeah. you get what we mean, this FBI rubbish. And the problem with that is it's never really calibrated when you do it yourself. So we could make something that's just got no consistency at all. And what ultimately do you learn from it? When we looked at videos, we just see a pellet going in to a certain depth, we see a wound channel open up and then shut again. For us, what we want to try and understand was what causes that wound channel. So when we did our, our calcs, we left it out of the episode because we weren't quite sure how it was going to go. We'd never seen it, the uh, blue type and the deviations that we use, not deviations, deformation tests we use in the pellet reviews, but calculated that the plasticine had a, a decent consistency to allow the pellet to slow at a different rate, so it wasn't as tough. Ideally, you would like to have done it in the summer when it was everything was a bit warmer and softer. Yeah, yeah. We'd have gotten a bit, a bit more, more information, but we still caught what we wanted, which is as the pellet goes in and the material starts to spread out and move away, the pellet head sort of peels round towards the waist a little bit and you've got the right for the marks and what we believe happens to create that big wound channel runabout in the jelly that then closes up is the pellet going in swishing everything around which opens it all up and what we're seeing was that star mark which we believe is that corkscrew effect yeah that corkscrew effect from the rifle in and the <coughs> deformation so if we can understand that and see where that's actually happening and at what range and how clear it is, it's going to give us a good idea of the type of damage that we're going to inflict on, on our target. And we found that it actually worked pretty well. We did try to recover on depth and penetration the arrow dite and the pellets out, so to speak, uh, but we, it didn't really work as we planned. It was yeah. not the greatest well, idea we've had. If it had been a bit more malleable and you had bigger, bigger cavities, you might have been able to see yeah. a bit more. Which is where all the terracotta putty and things like that yeah. that other people do come out to take, take things, but how realistic that is, we don't know. Yeah. All we wanted to do was just create a good shell and we wanted to make sure we got a good material that would cap help capture some data and quite possibly give us something to, to spin off with mm -hmm. later on. So, before you mentioned um, deviation, consistency and trajectory during the, uh, when you were explaining the data matrix. So, 
just go into those a bit more. Yeah, so let's let's look at the range now, the two calibers, and again it's that, it's that first data matrix. What we're, we're looking for here is manageability between the two calibers, so out in the field and then the overall effective range. So we discussed in that, that series I did about last year, which you know it wasn't the greatest visuals we've ever done. I mean, Tom wasn't even involved in it back then, I was still keeping everything rather quiet. But we, we talked about the drop off and how he had three circles within an inch grouping and how you group size and then getting it wrong on your rangefinder by because 41 yards is the same as 40.9 but your rangefinder will still tell you 40 so you aim shorter and miss because the drop off is, is that extreme. So we want to understand trajectory from that point of view and what we found was the 177 doesn't drop off as much as what the 22 does which we already knew but we were using like six mil dots at 60 yards in 22 and we were using two mil dots at 60 yards in 177 which then brings us on to your actual mil dots for your referencing you're trying to tie up a horizontal bead for your windage to aim off at trying to tie that up at six mil dots away from two mil dots is very difficult there's a lot more room for error when you're trying to get that intersection between the two whereas a 177 it stays close to horizontal bead so you've got more chance of getting your windage right based on the data and we went out and did this ourselves off camera where Tom just whacked out that bunny uh, I think it was like some 56, 54, 56 yards round about there and I was straight onto it literally just, just bending the pellets in there but all of them within you know, the, the rabbit's sort of head on that, on that yeah. drop down target couldn't have been able to do that with 2-2 and you get here Tom in the video getting excited and knocked down on penetration because it took that many takes to actually get us to get a 2-2 pellet into the putty we were aiming everywhere but it mm. so on that front you've got the uh, the manageability between two calibers due to trajectory so 177 was a clear winner for us there much more easy to manage then you've got the point of aim versus point of impact and group sizes and these are like on a sliding scale so for 2-2 two, two, what we found was yes it does stay truer to the point of aim where you're aiming to it doesn't deviate as much however what we do find and it's raining again is that the group sizes on the 2-2 two, two really started to open up and past 40 yards we were finding it was almost unmanageable to try and you use it get a group yeah, in the wind the more the stronger the wind the more everything broke up so for us it was a case of the, the, the 177 was just a much more manageable rifle to use at range than the 22 was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so effectiveness. We obviously did the knockdown tests and the penetration tests, so what did we find from there? So the knockdown and penetration test, the idea of that was to really separate them out and, and understand what's happening when the two calibers impact their target. So we see that the 22 really slaps that target down, but it's, it is like it's a, a proper a slap. Yeah. But that's what we felt ultimately it was because past sort of 30 yards it was struggling to get past the actual shell. But what, one of the issues that I kept coming back to was a, a hunt I had in November just before we did the Rotex review and there was a, a tree of squirrels, five squirrels in there, two of them were still breathing. This was at 25, 20 to 30 yards that these, these were taken down. The shot placing was perfect but they were still breathing and that's when we started to think there's something not quite right with the 2 2 calibre. The, the rifle was was getting there on, on power, there was no issues there, we are using the right pellets for the job, pellets that we trust, but the 2-2 it was just spreading all its energy into the thing, what we think happens is the 2-2 hits the target, it fractures loads of bone, this, that yeah. and the other, because these animals were comatose, yeah. they, they, weren't, they weren't able to move, they had no conscious thought, they were just in balls, they weren't wagging their tails or anything, they were literally dead to the world, they still breathing. 177, straight in very precise yeah, and that's yeah. what Tom's saying about elephant and stiletto feet it's just more it's precise and, simple, area, yeah. Yeah. and it really does drive in there nice and, and deep and you know yes you do get over penetration but I've never seen anything breathing after over penetration and that was the difference for me yeah and that's why I went with the 2-2 so there's another 177 sorry on, on penetration and knockdown the other thing that we saw with that was the actual damage that was done and again that twisting effect which we spoke about in the ballistics so I'm not really going to go into that again other than the 177 was still doing that at 60 yards and we would like to have gone out to 80 yards but there's no way we would have been able to compare the two because I don't think we'd have been would have hit it. Something we'll look at in the future though. Yeah try it is, yeah once we get a bit more, well once the weather's a bit better and it's not snowing. Mm. So there's a big argument about fur and feather. Yeah. What calibers to go for? 
So, so where do we where do we end with all of this then? That's probably what we're, what we're saying yeah. here. Now there is a saying out there: two two for fur, one seven seven feather, or vice versa. I can't remember what it is. And there's another one out there as well, which I can't remember what it is. Is it paper for one seven seven and meat for two two or something? It's all sorts. Of it's it's garbage in our opinion. I mean, if you believe it, fantastic. But we don't. What we came down to to thinking was we 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 generalise it like this now. And if anyone wants to ask us, this is what we would say. 2-2 is your farmyard rifle. It's great for inside barns, short range work, anything up to, I would say 40 yards is your maximum workability. And off the penetration test, I would say it's probably even less than that. Yeah. Which is why I think Basque do this whole 35 yards maximum shot thing. Because the two, two, if you can't just say it's, it's this range for this calibre, this range for that calibre. So they have to generalise it. And I think 2-2, two, two, when you think of 0.25 is the next, next size up, that's a big every round. Mm. So for us, yeah, 2-2 two, two is the farmyard rifle. Great for around tractors, farm machinery, yeah, skulking, close. close range ratting, excellent yeah. for it. Really Pigeons well put out of down. rafters. It's... Yeah, something with thistle, I just realised. And the 177, that's got to be the farmland rifle. Yeah. You know, taking it out into the fields, this, that and the other, and using that range. You know, yeah. we're, we're generally finding 40 yards, really easy, out to 50 yards, not really having to think that much yeah. about it with 177. 2 2, we would have to be crawling in another 10, 15 Definitely, yards yeah, at yeah. least. Definitely. So that's that's how we generalise it. 177 for farmland, 2 2 for farmyard. Is 0.2 the perfect calibre? Yeah. Um, it's more I, expensive generally, the pellets aren't yeah, that Harder common. to find, I think it's harder to find. Yeah, bigger range is stocked. And yeah. let's face it, between 177 and 2 2, what, is, what can 2 2 do that 177 can't? And I would always apply that to 2 2 as well. If you've got, sorry, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's still got a looping trajectory. Yeah. It's still not as it's, flat as 177. It, it's not going to give you anything, anything. Well, it's just that it is going to be a midway between 177 and 2 2. You're going to be able to push an extra 10 yards perhaps out on that 2 2's range. But and then you've got to ask yourself I could get an extra 10 yards of 177. Uh, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's all it is is just less aggressive movements between 177 and 22. So, and for me, and more cost. If you had to buy one rifle, and that was all you were ever going to have, it would have to be a 177 for us. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we've both come from 22 backgrounds, and we both shoot 177. Yeah. Now we've got 22s, but we yeah. we don't use them that yeah. much. I think if you've got the resources, it's great to have both. It's great to have that practice on a 22. And but uh, yeah, if you're only going to get one rifle get the one that covers both ranges yeah it's versatile it's more accurate yeah but as always it's your call it's your money yeah. you do what you want with it you don't have to listen to us this is just what we're finding out as we go through our journey we hope you stay with us and we hope you, you keep coming with us on this this amazing journey because we do like shooting we like getting outdoors not when it's like this but then again it's just nice to have a bit of peace and quiet as always, like us on Facebook, subscribe to the channel. We're all, in, all the media platforms now, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. We don't get that much on there at the minute, yeah. but we're, we're struggling to get out. The, the, the wind's nice. just horrendous. Yeah. And get some nicer weather, nice. nicer pictures. Yeah, we did have some nice sunny pictures, but they're all gone now. So, that's, that's our, our 177-22 battle on pellet choice. Feel free to drop a comment and give your own opinion. It's interesting to see what other people have got to say. So. Always. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. See ya.